February the 16th, 1986, Julie Strong interviewing Mr. Ken Jackson on the topic of black enterprise in Austin between 1890 and 1920. Mr. Jackson lives at 1704 East 18th Street in Austin and is said to be between 92 and 94 years of age. What 6th Street was like? Like when I was a boy? When you uh, were a boy. Way back then, like yeah. that? We're looking for the period 1900 approximately yeah. to 1920. So, Mr. Willie Nunn told me that you've lived in Austin a long time. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And that you were down on 6th Street oh, during yeah. that period. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that you might have some good memories for us to tell mm -hmm. us what the street looked like, what businesses were there. We're particularly interested in the 400 block of 6th Street. So, what can you tell us? Were you down on 6th Street during the early years of this century? Oh, uh -huh, yes, I was down there. Uh -huh. I was down there before 1900. Oh, you were? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What were you doing down there? Just playing at that time. I was playing up and down the street at that time. and uh, As a boy, you mean? Yes. What, playing and what? on the north, on the north, uh, uh, west side of uh, 6th Street was planks to walk on. Uh -huh. There was no sidewalk there, just planks. You'd walk on planks back to the alley. And when you crossed the alley, you was at Hancock Opera House. Okay. That's, that was the opera house that was here years ago. Uh huh. And that's that was that was a, that was the name of the opera house there. Uh huh. And I, he had a son, and me and his son was about the same age. Who are you talking and about? He, hmm. Who are you talking about? Who is he? Hancock. Oh, Hancock himself. He okay. owned the opera house uh -huh. there on the corner of the alley back of Sixth Street on the west side. And over over here then, on uh, the west, on the south side of 6th Street, was a, a clothing store there. Uh -huh. And, uh, let me see, I'm trying to get the name of it now. Well, I, can't, I can't call the name of it right now, but it'll come to me after a while. This was department clothing? Hmm? It, this was a department store where clothes were sold? Yeah, clothing store. Uh -huh. Was uh -huh. there right on the corner, 6th and Congress Avenue. Okay, well, well tell and, me about... Uh, Scarborough come to Austin and, and went in business with him. Uh -huh. Scarborough come to Austin from Rockdale. Okay. Yes, that's where Scarborough come from, Rockdale, Texas. Uh -huh. And when he bought interest in that store there on the corner, he eventually bought that man out, mm -hmm. and that's how comes Scarborough, you know, bought all of that, and that's, that's where Scarborough Building come from. Right. See, found in the way. Well, what were you uh, playing? You said you were playing as yes, a boy. Yes, I was just a boy playing around there, oh, and you know, doing things. People called you sometimes to do this and called you to do that, you know. Uh -huh. What kind of games did you play? Hmm? What kind of games did you play? Marbles and uh -huh. spin tops and all like that. Right there at Six and Congress Avenue. Uh -huh. We spin marbles and tops and everything. And people would be on the sidewalk watching us shoot marbles, you know, and seeing how we could hit them so far from one another and uh -huh. like that. And uh, when uh, right back of that was a barber shop. Back of where? See, it was years before one white man would cut another white man's hair. White men didn't want to cut another white man's hair. Oh, really? And all of the barbers in Austin then were Negro barbers. Is that a fact? And right behind that store, uh, on the store? corner there, that, that little store there, where Scarbers, where you'd go down there first there, well, that was a, a Negro barber shop. Okay, are we and talking about on 12, Congress? Right down to Six and Congress. It, well, it wasn't on the corner, you know, just back of the corner, back of that grocery, back of that barber shop. That, gro that clothing store was on the corner. Okay, was this in the first block east of Congress? Yes, on yes, 6th on Street. 6th Street. Okay, yeah. what side of the street, the north or south side? That was the south side of 6th Street. Okay. Oh, that's where Scarborough's is at now. See, it's on the west side of 6th Street. It's on the west side of Congress, where Scarborough's yeah. building is. Right. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm right on 6th and Congress Avenue on the south side. Okay. On the south, you know, west side. That was a, a, a barber shop, and there's nothing was in there but colored barbers. It uh -huh. was 12, 12 chairs in that shop, six on each side. If you go down the center aisle, it was six chairs on one side and six on the other. Uh -huh. And those were all colored barbers. Uh -huh. What was the name of the shop, do you remember? Or who, who it was, was a, 
Oh, this street up here is named Harrison. Bob Harrison. Bob Harrison. That was Bob Harrison's barber shop mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And they didn't cut nothing but white people's hair. They didn't cut, you know, no Negroes' hair and all, no mm -hmm. blacks' hair and all. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, you know, porters in there and like that, you know, they were they were cut it and like that. And the next thing that I know much about it happened there on Sixth Street. We were playing on the north side of Sixth Street, Sixth and Congress. And it was a man coming down the street over there on the south side of Sixth Street. And uh, the man on the north side shot the man was over there on the south side of Sixth Street. Mm -hmm. And it was in the winter time he had on a big black overcoat. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at the man with a, that he was shooting. Mm -hmm. And every time a bullet would hit that overcoat, hair, you know, and dust would fly from it. Wow. Now, that was the first killing that I ever seen. In when life. would this have been? Hmm? Can you think of a, a year about when would this have been? Well, that was in about, uh, must have been in about 1899, a little earlier. It was before 1900. Uh-huh. What, what caused the fight to begin? No, you know? I don't know. Now, that, see, gambling was very popular back there then. They just... You know, gambling was wide open. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was about some kind of gambling that I would figure, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. I have those men's name here, some of both of them's name. And I don't know, but the two, I get the two names together, but I don't know the one's name that shot the other one. I don't know which one that killed the other one. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was the first killing that ever I seen on 6th Street. And then next to the, uh, Next to the barber shop then was a drugstore back there. It was on the corner of the alley back there on the south side. Now, those okay. people lived on it on that drugstore at that time lived on on uh, on uh, West Avenue up there. But I can't I can't call their names now. People move so much, you know. Do you so do you happen to have any kind of clippings or newspaper articles about that gunfight that you were telling us about? Oh, I have them. I have some of them, some records, you know, and things like that. But I don't know now where all of them at. After I got old and quit, you know, traveling and going about and come home, well, then I had a daughter. That was in 19, uh, the last time when I come home and then brought family with me was in 1906. That's when my daughter here, you know, was born. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do much traveling and going there. Mm -hmm. But when I was a young man, I didn't get no education, much education. I said what I got was travelation. I travel. I just went over. I just went. I went all through the western states, and, and, and all of them. And and the coldest climate it, it is in the United States today to me is uh, Indiana. Mm -hmm. now, I think Indiana is about the coldest state that we have. I spent one of that a couple of times. Oh, and it was it was so cold. It was awful cold in Indiana. Well, have you lived in Austin all of your life, Mr. Jackson? No, no. But I never I never stayed away from home too long. Okay, so you've been I, here I, most of your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, most of my life I've been, I've, I've been here. Uh -huh. And every time I would come home, it'd be a little change that's made here, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't there wasn't very much. Mm -hmm. so, now, yeah. on the south side, on the east side of Congress Avenue, going north from 6th Street, going up that way, it was a... Uh, one jewelry store over there, and it was Bands, Bands Jewelry Store. How do you spell Had that? a great big clock hanging down right in the middle of Congress Avenue. It is either A.J. Band, A.R. Band, or something like that. And after I got grown, I, I, I used to work for them some. But I was working at a jewelry store here then. It was called Lansdowne Barrett Jewelry Store. Lansdowne? No, and when uh, the Bands would come home, they, she would, oh, I had lots of fine jewelry. She had a very expensive jewelry because they would go to England, you know, and buy jewelry and come back with it. And uh, Miss Ban would want to know where I was at because I would clean her jewelry for her. Mm -hmm. I like how to clean jewelry, you know, polish jewelry, you know, in a, in a jewelry store in New York. Well, it was, matter, it was, uh, uh, hold a minute Place in, place in New York, where on both sides of the street there were nothing but jewelry stores. Fifth Avenue? Hmm? Fifth Avenue? Uh, 
what's your say? Fifth Avenue? Do no, no, no. Fifth Avenue wasn't much too much in, in New York at that time. Uh, I forget what this what the place is called, but it was just about two blocks long. And nothing on nothing well but just jewelry stores on each side of on each side of the street. Maiden Lane. Ma Maiden Lane. Maiden. That was the name of it. Maiden Lane. So that's where you learned and, how and that's where I learned how to clean jewelry and polish, you know, jewelry and stuff there. And whenever the bands would come home, they'd gone out of business, you know, and retire. Well, I would clean Miss Band's jewelry for her. So when I got a technical job on sale it, at a jewelry store here, the name of it was Lansdowne Barrett. Where, where were I spent they? in the late years, you know, in the 20s. In the 20s, and, okay. And I, I went to work for Lansdowne Barrett, and uh, then I would clean Miss uh, Miss Band's jewelry store. Uh -huh jewelry for her and they fixed me a little place upstairs you come in the front door this way then and it was a stairway hill going up and you go through the ground floor you know and you could go way way back in the jewelry store where was, where was but that? i would go up the stairway to fix me a place up on the up there you know the clean jewelry mm -hmm. polished jewelry and fixed jewelry from where was lansdowne's jewelry located now on congress avenue in the uh 800 block okay did you ever work on sixth street Yes, I worked on Sixth her? Street. I worked for them, I, the little people that I'm talking about now, Lansdowne Barrett. They, so they had another worked, shop they, on Sixth Street. Was, they was uh, that was in the twenties, and some old people that I worked for, they had a bookstore here on Congress Avenue. Their name was Tobin, Tobin's Bookstore. Right now that here. was the oldest bookstore, and I don't know anything about being in Austin. Mm -hmm. It was Tobin's Bookstore, and I believe at one time. I believe that old man Tobin at one time, I believe he was governor of Texas. I believe he was. Uh, mm -hmm. He was I connected right. with the with the uh, uh, law department, you know, from out of the capital up there. Uh -huh. with him. Because he got a bunch of land. See, the state didn't have no money to pay governors with at that time. Mm -hmm. And the governor's taking the land for pay. That's why infield is out there. See, now Governor Pease taking that land, you know, for his pay. Mm -hmm. And that's why Enfield is out there. Okay. See, now his relatives, the Pease relatives, see, married, you know, to different people. The uh, 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 One of the Pease girls married uh, a man by the name of Grimm. Mm -hmm. Now, you you may have heard of uh, yeah, Enfield out there, you know, the Grimm's, you know, mm -hmm. had it and controlled it. Well, that all come through old man governor, the governor Pease, you know, that had been given. And one of his daughters married a man by the name of Grimm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she married then uh, one of the Pease girls married mm -hmm. a Grimm. Mm -hmm. And that's why that uh, the Grimm's now, you know, and and, and and them control so much of Enfield and own so much of Enfield. Well, what we are really, uh, we're, what we're focusing on is the black businessman. The black businessman. And what blacks did for living, for a living on 6th Street. Mm -hmm. So we want to, we want to, this is going to be uh, an exhibit. I do want to go down 6th Street with it now. Yeah, all, and, all, and focus all, on all the right. blacks and uh, what you did and yeah. your friends did for a living mm -hmm. and what black businessmen did. This mm -hmm. is going to be an exhibit mm -hmm. at, at the Carver mm -hmm. Library here. Oh, oh, wait, 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 where are we? Down that way. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, okay. um, I'll tell you now that uh, the uh, people in Austin that had servants, you know, the women, you know, the work for them, but they didn't pay them much money, you know, at that time. Mm -hmm. Everything was very cheap, though. And uh, the first cafe that was on 6th Street, owned by a Negro, his name was Manning. I can't call his first name now. Hey. It was Manning. He had the first cafe Can you spell on, that West one? Street. on West 6th Street. On West 6th Street. Yes, about two blocks up West 6th Street there. That was a, a, a first black cafe, and I think it was in Austin. It might have been one before him, but if it was, I don't know anything about it. How do you spell now, Manning? Was, huh? How do you spell Manning? 
Manning. His name was Manning. How do you spell it? M A N N E N? Yeah, M A N M A N N, I believe. Okay. It's called Manning. Manning. M A N N I N G. It might have been spelled that way. Okay. So that was the first black cafe on West 6th Street. That was the first black cafe. And it was up on West 6th Street. Uh-huh. Now, behind now, going towards 5th Street, why, uh, that was, uh... Okay. Wasn't Abshaw, this one. It was before Abshaw. He had a blacksmith shop mm-hmm. between 5th and... Between 6th and 5th Street. Up there on, uh, that must have been, was that Guadalupe? No, before you get to Guadalupe. Uh, Colorado. Hmm? Colorado. <laughs> yes, yeah, some, some colored people live there on Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get to them. And, okay, and, what and, year and, was and, this uh, Manning's restaurant? What year was that? Oh, Manning. Or decade. Oh, uh, it, it, it must have been in the, uh, Teens. In the teens. In the teens when he had that cafe there. Yeah, or maybe even before then. Okay. But yes, it was before then because that was before 1900. Yeah, okay, that was before mm-hmm. 1900. Yes. And the one that run the barber shop around the corner, corner there. You talking about Bob Harrison's barber shop? Hmm? Are you talking about, are you thinking about Bob Harrison's? No, I'm talking about a blacksmith shop oh, okay. where they shoot horses right. you know, and mm-hmm. fix wagons. What was the name of that? Shaw. 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 Ab. A B. Ab Shaw. Must be kindred. He had a blacksmith shop back there and a uh, man by the name of Wilson. He had a little shop back there where he did a uh, work for colored people and when he would do white people's work too. What kind of work? Fixing wagons and teams. He was a blacksmith. Uh-huh. Yeah, he and was his a name was Wilson? Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, if we're going down on... Let's go to the east side. Let's go to the east side. Yeah, let's go to the east side. Yeah, yeah, the east side. Mm-hmm. And coming out... Coming out 6th Street... Uh... Well, I'd have to go to 1st Street. Now, the first blacks... First block? First the first block? blacks... They owned almost all of 1st Street from Congress Avenue and up there to about uh, 4th Street. Not all of that property on the east side uh-huh. of Congress Avenue was owned by Negroes. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was owned by Negroes. Negroes owned all of that, uh, all of that property. Right, so you're talking about between 1st Street and 4th Street on the east side of Congress. Is that mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That's where Negroes lived. Mm-hmm. On, the, on the east side of Congress Avenue. Uh, the, the, uh, oh, it's funny how them name, how I can't call them names all the time. But I, I, I knew all those families that lived along there and owned that property. How far east did that black community extend? Did it, did it go all the way to the 600 and 700 block of East 1st Street? No, it just come to about the 400 block on East 1st Street. Okay. The, along that, right just across the street in the old depot. Mm-hmm. So that was a black community at that this time. That was a black community. And you're talking about the year 1900. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that was before 1900. When they owned that property, because well, so I don't know when the property was bought, you know, mm-hmm. and when they owned it, but I, I know that they lived along in there. They sold out along in there. I remember, you know, when they done the selling, selling out, you know, sold the property and stuff like that. Okay, so what you're talking about, and then is the 1890s that this was a black Yeah, community. yeah, it could have been. You don't want to go back that far, do you? Oh, yes, I do. I want to go all the way back to 1890. Yeah, 1890. Well, that's... Or that's, earlier, that's whatever good. you can remember. Well, they sold, they sold all of that... You know, people bought them out, you know. Mm-hmm. But now they didn't take the property from them. They sold them a property that wasn't worth much then, see. Uh-huh. And they eventually sold out, and then when they sold out, they come to 6th Street, you know. And then sold out to whites? Oh. Hmm? Sold out to white folks? Yeah, they sold out to white folks. See, it wasn't no use for one colored man to sell to another one because he wouldn't have money enough, you know, to pay him uh-huh. as much as a white man would pay him for them. Okay, now are so you saying... People, are you saying that black people not only lived between 1st and 4th Streets, but they had their businesses between 1st and 4th, and then they moved up to 6th Street for their businesses? 
Well, uh, Are you saying one or two of them may have had a little business in there now. Uh -huh. But, it was but a they most have lived in that. Yeah. Dwelling houses okay. was in there. That was just right. their homes, homestead, you know, okay. where they live. But some of them might have a little something in there. Now, on the west, on the west side of uh, Congress Avenue, a uh, uh, boot maker and a shoemaker he had a business over there, and he had a, he was the last person to have a, a business on the west side of 6th Street, on, on the west side of Congress Avenue. Was his name Tom Lashwa? No, no, De Lashwa was uh, Dennis. Yeah, I know, but his father was a bootmaker. De Lashwa was a, a druggist. I know. And now his, uh, De Lashwa's, uh, the man that raised him wasn't his father. Yeah. He, he delivered know. ice in Austin. He, he was... We called him, you know, the Ice Man. And when the last while I was small, a boy, he drove a little wagon, horse in the wagon, you know, and delivered ice. He delivered ice all over Austin, the last while there, when he was small. What happened to the father? He didn't have father. He didn't know his father. He didn't know his no, father? No. No, I don't, I don't, I didn't know the last was real father. See? Because she oh, married a man by the name of Jennings. See? That run a drugstore down there on 6th Street. Jennings, Jennings Drugstore. The, the last while's mother married a man Jennings. And then he sold ice all over town. The last while did. Delivered ice all over town. Okay, well, let's go on to, let's go back to 6th um, Street. East 6th Street. Street. East 6th Street. Well, now, the first... I don't know who had the first business on or going east on 1st Street. I don't know what block it started in. But it must have started about the... And the 200 block, I believe, going down 6th Street was a drugstore down in Marley's Drugstore. Morley's? Morley's Drugstore. And it was a, a, a colored fella opened up a little place of business right on the other side of Morley's Drugstore. Yeah, that must have Marley's been in the 200 Marley's block. Marley's. But I can't call his name now. But it was a, 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 a black man that had a business in there. And he, he sold out to a man by the name of Herman Becker. And Herman Becker on a cafe down. That was on the south side of uh, 6th Street, going out, going out 6th was Street. Was Herman Becker Negro? No, uh, some, Herman Becker was a Chinaman or some kind of out language person, I believe. No, Herman, Herman Becker sold out to a Chinaman. That's the way it was. Herman Becker on a cafe there for years. And the 200 right. block on 6th Street. All right, now, 6th Street. Mar all right, the man who had a, a business next to Marley's Drug? Yes, what and, and the same business? block, it might not have been next yeah. door, but as he had a business there in the same the block in Marley's Drug store. And what kind of business? What did he do? He had a clothing, but mostly second-hand clothing. He ran a second-hand store there. And what was his name? I believe his name was... His name was Foster. His name was Ike. We called him Ike, I believe. Ike Foster. We said, old man Ike Foster, you know. We were small. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson? And then it come, went on down further then. And, uh... Okay, now what year would this have been that, that Ike Foster had that shop? Had that shop in there? Oh, that must have been in, uh... That was a little before 1900. That was about 1898 or 99, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, do you remember seeing a restaurant on East 6th Street uh, owned by a woman named Lois Jones? Does that name ring a bell? Oh, yes, yes. Tell me about Lois Jones and where she was. Well, now, she lived, she left here in her early years and went to Chicago. And she lived in Chicago for a long, long time. And then she come back to Austin. And she run two cafes down there on East 6th Street in the 400 block. Do you remember she what their names were? She cooked in one and brought the, uh, brought the food across the street, you know, to the other. Uh-huh. Do you remember what the names of her cafes were? No, I remember now what the name, what the name of it was. 
No, it was carefully there then, even after she sold out. Wow. Yeah. All right, so when was Lois Jones there, about? Do you have any idea? Mm hmm? How long and when was Lois Jones down on the 400 block of East 6th Street? Oh, I imagine she was down there maybe two years or something like that. She was down there about that long. Do you she remember was... being inside her Oh, cafe? yes, I went in there lots of times. What like kind that. of food did she serve? Oh, she served real good meals. She served, she served good meals. Lots of white people ate, ate you know, and, and white people have ate on 6th Street and the 400 block as long as I can remember those colored cafes. Uh -huh. Now, another lady that run a cafe down there for years and years, her name was, uh, her name was Pollard. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about Kitty Pollard. Kitty Pollard, yes, yeah, that's right. You have some up down about. Yeah, we've got that some. Was, that was in the later years when Miss Pollard was down there. Okay, tell me about Kitty Pollard's restaurant. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about it? Oh, sure. Well, I'll tell you. She fed more people in her cafe and in other it was, it was called, uh, and then she had taken on a lady by the name of Betts, and Miss Pollard and Miss Betts. They were partners in, in the cafe. I think there was. I don't know. Miss Miss Kitty Pollard seemed to be the boss all the time, and Miss Betts, you know. Well, they just worked together. Well, was Miss Betts black? Yes, she was black. Yes, uh -huh. she was black. Mm -hmm. and what kind of restaurant? What kind of food did they serve? Oh, they served. They served real good. I saved the best meals. At the Chicken meals. and oh, dumplings. Oh yes, Miss Pollard. Miss Pollard. She served some good meals. Now, you said she fed more people in her cafe. Oh yes, than she anybody said a lot. Miss Pollard, Miss Kitty, and Miss Betts fed more people on Sixth Street, and any you know cafe back there, yeah. you know, years ago. Since that time, it's people that fed more people. Why was it so popular? Because that's such a good food, and they give you so much for your money. And good service? Yeah, yeah, good service. How much did it cost to eat there? Oh, you get a dinner then for uh, 25 cents would get you a good dinner. And breakfast was 15 cents. You get a cup mm -hmm. of coffee and a sausage and biscuits and make biscuits then and serve for breakfast, you know, with uh -huh. Jimmy. Well, how long would you say Miss Kitty was down there? Oh, Miss Kitty must have been down there. I'd have to say she was down there, I guess, 40 years or maybe longer. On, on the 400 block? On the 400 block, mm-hmm. Do you remember somebody named Elizabeth Glasgow? Who? Elizabeth Glasgow? Who owned the Glasgow? Uh -huh. Yes, way down in that close to Red River. Now she run on. She was a seamstress, Miss Glasgow was. And uh, uh, she didn't, no, nobody didn't uh, trade with her, you know, without they had, you know, money, you no know, rich people. Uh, she used to make all of the rich little castles and uh, all those people and all and all those people. Uh -huh. Well, that's she made clothes for them, uh -huh. like the wedding gowns and all like that. Uh -huh. well, she so she that. made she made uh, clothing for big occasions. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Any other anything else besides weddings that you can remember she sewed for? Well, she just. Stayed and run her business for a long, for a long, long time, or many a year. Did she but run she, that business she, before or after she was in the restaurant business? Was she doing it at the same time she was running her restaurant? Can you remember? Now wait a minute. Now you, you all got, you all got her mixed up now. Cause I, she didn't run no restaurant. She okay. didn't run. No, she was the one that was a seamstress. Glasgow, Elizabeth Glasgow. Yeah, she was. She was. Was was a seamstress. Okay, and when was she a seamstress? Right that right down, almost on the corner of uh, Red River and Sixth Street. She was way down there. Okay, and about when do you remember that she was a seamstress? Hmm. What years? Oh, she was out. 
from the early 1900s or uh, in 1900s. She may have been there in 1900. It was almost long as I can remember. I, I was pretty good size, you know. She had her business there. But she was sewing for people then. Mm -hmm. And when she stopped sewing, you know, for all those white people and all like that, why, well, she had to work so then, you know, for colored people and things like that. And a runners, but you know, sell clothes in there and things. Where, like where did she learn how to sew? Do you know? No, I don't know where she got her training from to sew, but she could sew. You know where she was from? No, she was no. here when I got four. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Okay, do you remember a pool hall run by Julius Wright? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you ever play pool that? there? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever remember him? Is that what you oh, said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, Judas Wright come to Austin from, uh, from Lockhart, a uh, 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 Lulin one. He come from down and out of Austin. Uh -huh. And when he come to Austin, he worked at the Driscoll Hotel when he first come here. Doing what? And then he got a job up at the Iron Front Saloon. Oh, good. And he pulled it in that saloon, saloon and pool hall. Uh, and, uh, uh -huh. oh, he worked here for years and years. And when did he open his own pool hall? What year about? Oh, he must open that pool hall sometime. Oh, he must open his pool hall sometime in the teens, I guess. What, can, what do you remember about what that pool hall looked like? And where was it? Well, it was on, uh, it was in the 400 block on East 6th Street. Mm -hmm. On the north or south side? Uh, on the north side. And they played dominoes in there. Domino and pool hall was together. And the tables was here and in, in the back there was a big place for them to play dominoes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, tables in the front. Mm-hmm. Tables were in the front. Any liquor sold there? Could you drink there? Uh, there was a liquor store down up there. Let me see that. Judas, Judas right was on the corner. In the later years, while a man opened up a cafe up there, was, that was in, that was in uh, you know, much, much later, much later years. Uh-huh. Well, uh, do was, you his remember? His name was Maroney. The yeah. man that opened up that cafe was named Maroney, Charlie yeah. Maroney. I want to talk about Charlie Mal Maroney in just a minute, but I want to hear more about this Mr. Julius Wright. Uh, t tell me what he looked like. Did he ever hang out in the pool hall? Did he ever play pool with Oh, yes, customers? he was good. He was a wonderful pool player. Uh -huh. yes. Did he but dress he up? He didn't, he didn't quit leave the uh, job that he had until Prohibition days. And then he come down there then, you know, to his own pool hall. Oh, and so he, he had his own business. He was making it a Yes, he had, he his, he own had business. his own business. He never rented none from nobody. He had his own business. But so he stayed at the Iron Front Saloon. Hmm? He was at the he was at the Iron Front, Front Saloon. Saloon. That was on Congress Avenue. On Congress and had his business on that, Texas. Had the a same saloon time. down there, of his, a pool hall down there, yes, of his own. But then Prohibition came, and that's when he just went to his own business? Yeah, that's, that's when he come to his own business to run. Uh, was that business, was it your impression that that pool hall made a lot of money? Was it a good business? Oh, yeah, sure. It made lots of money. Uh -huh. Did that's he become cool. wealthy? Yes, he did. Uh -huh. Sure. And because he, he went to California, oh. and he moved to California and bought a home for his wife. When? And, and, uh... When, when did he do that, that Mr. That was Jackson? in the, uh... That was in the teens, sometime in the teens. I don't know exactly what year it was. Did he come back but to I, Austin after that? But just... He, he, he didn't live out there no time, you know. He oh. come right on back home. When he bought a home for his wife, you know, well, then he come home. Uh -huh. And he would just make trips out there, you know, uh -huh. to see her. But he never lived out there. I see. Did, no. What was his wife's name? Do you remember? Lala. I believe her name was named mm -hmm. Lala, wasn't it? Lala. Lala, Lala right, uh -huh. was his wife. Did they have children? No, they didn't have any children. No children? No, they never, they never had children in their life. All right, well, Father tell me about this it. pool hall. Was it, uh, how popular was it oh, among it was, black it, folks? Oh, yes, it was popular. Well, it was honest. Well, it was honest recreation place, you know, there on the, in the 400 block on, on, on uh -huh. 6th Street. 
Uh-huh. There wasn't no other place for them to go, you know, but Judith Wright's is pool hall if they didn't want to, you know, eat. Cafe's down there. But uh, going to, well, he had a saloon in that one time, too. Julius Wright did? Yeah, he sold beer in there. You know, he didn't sell no hard liquor in there. Uh-huh. He sold beer in there. Okay, so that's what you mean when he had a saloon. The saloon wasn't a different business. It mm-hmm. was inside mm-hmm. the pool hall, is yeah, that right? inside the pool hall, yeah. Okay. Well, so how long did he run that pool hall? Coming back and forth between California uh, where he, he saw stayed, his He life? stayed in the pool hall until he passed. When? I don't know what year it was or when he passed. I, I, may, I may not have been here in town when Jill just passed. I don't remember. Uh-huh. But he passed for his wife, did yeah. Do you remember that he was a real dressed up man? Oh yes, yes, yes. He was dressed up all the time. What do you but mean? He what do you bin- wear? He wore business clothes. He uh-huh. wore business clothes all the time. A suit? Never seen him out on the street in a shirt sleeve. Oh really? Nothing like that. So we, what do you mean by business clothes? That's the style of a suit of clothes uh-huh. that was popular back there, you know, okay. in the, the olden time. days. If you was a businessman, nine percent of them, they wore business suits. Okay. Tell me what these business suits look like. Were they different from the ones that we had today? No, 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 no. Yes, they were made a little. Di- they were made a little different. They fit a little man tighter, you know. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of bagging, you know, hanging around. A vest. The pants were slim and fit you good. Did, Come it, down did you wear a vest? Shoe, over your shoe tops, you know, uh-huh. and your coat fit your snow. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, a tall collar. Oh, oh, yes, it had a collar on it, okay. but it laid back just like a okay. collar on any other seat. Okay. All right. Let's go on to Charlie Maroney and talk about him. What What do you remember about Mr. Maroney's cafe? Oh, he had a, he had a, he had a wonderful place down there. Now, he owned his own property down there on 6th Street. Charlie Maroney did. He owned, he owned his property down there on 6th Street. Uh-huh. And, uh... It was very nice in his place. Oh, very nice, very nice. It was. What did it look like? He um, himself? No, what did the place look like? You said it was real nice. Oh, it, I yes, just it, wondered it, what it you was. Meant. It was real nice. It was, the chairs had the backs on them, and the seats had the cushion and the man on the sun. And it was really tops. It was really tops. It wasn't a cafe holly in Austin. Nowhere, quite a nowhere, was in a nice inside in Charlie Maroon. Oh, place. really? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. It, it was It was really a nice place. Well, how many tables were there? About? No, it must have been eight or ten tables in there. Uh-huh. Were there waitresses? Oh, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Were mm-hmm. they black? Yeah, they were all black. Uh-huh. What kind of food? Oh, good food. He had <laughs> top cooks. He, he, he didn't fool with anything cheap or nothing like that. He had, if he was going to have something, he was going to have the best, or he wouldn't have it. Huh? How did he get into business? How did he get into business? From working up on Congress Avenue at that Iron Front Saloon. Mr. Maroney did, too. No, Maroney didn't work up there. Maroney, Maroney didn't, he didn't work up there. No, no, no. Okay, how did Mr. Maroney get into business, do you know? From I guess I guess his father must have left him that property there. See, it uh-huh. was two of those Maroney boys, Charlie and uh, mm-hmm. I can't call the other one's name. Rufus. Mm-hmm. Rufus Maroney. Rufus. Uh-huh. Well, that must have been Charlie's brother. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe the father was named Rufus. Maybe so, I but I know the brother now. was What's too. What's the father was name? <coughs> but he must have bought that property and had that property. See, so he was just born, you know, into the money. Mm-hmm. Not much money, but into. And he owned a nice home where he lived, but he li- he lived out here on uh, up here, right off of. Yeah, well, here we yeah, yeah, yeah. But the home place that his daddy left him was was you don't remember that was down there down there where Ethel used to live at. You know where Ethel lived down there one time. You know that creek like. Mm-hmm. Well, that was that was a uh, uh, Charlie Maroney's home before he bought this property out here. And then he well, I'm interested in your saying that there were black waitresses working yeah. in Mr. Maroney's because somewhere I got the idea that in those days women didn't go down on 6th Street very very comfortably. 
Is that not right? Were there, when you go down the 6th Street, would you see women? Would you see a lot of women? Was it a place for both men and women to oh, have yes, recreation? On the south side. Women would go up and down on the south side. It was pretty rough over on the north side. Why? Yeah. Why, why, what, what made it rough on the north side? Well, it was gambling over there, uh -huh. you know, and the pool halls and all like that was over there. And uh, that was on the lower end, you know, on it going east. So you okay. went with pretty, you know. This was not the 400 block? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. So down, say, on the 500 or 600 the 500 or 700 block. Especially the 500 block. Okay, so that was where it got rougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so 500 to 700 block. And, I, and, the, four, and the 400 block, it was rough down here on the lower end, see? Uh -huh. when he, it was rough down there. But when you had way up, you know, close to Salerone's saloon, you know, uh -huh. well, then it was it was all right. 400 was nice. block was, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, was the 400 block of East 6th known as a place in Austin, where there were a lot of black businessmen, yeah, were there yeah. other places in Austin where black businessmen gathered together, or was it just right in this one little spot? No, uh, 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 it went on down to Fifth Street, down down to the five hundred block. A Carrington store. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the four. You're saying then that the four hundred and five hundred blocks of Sixth Street were real well known. Mm -hmm. Is the there's the locations uh -huh. for black uh -huh. businesses. Now, now, let me see now. For in the 500 block on East 6th Street, that was uh, the first business was there. It was a two-story house building on the corner. And then next to it was a funeral home. Mm -hmm. that, that was Tears Funeral Home. The funeral home is up oh, here now. Yeah. Well, that's where the old man originated the first... Negro funeral home was in Austin. Right. It was an old man tears. That's right, but that was on the 500 block, right? That's in the yeah. 500 uh -huh. block. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And it was other businesses down there, too, operated, you know, by Negroes. Uh-huh. Um, in the 500 block. L.D. Lyons? I know, uh... Yeah, yeah. Huh? Mr. Yeah. Lyons, L.D. Lyons had a grocery L store. L.D. Lyons was in the, was in the uh, 500, 500 block. Uh -huh. And then you, you cross the street, eh? Uh-huh. And that's where Tails opened up the funeral home for him. That must have been in the 600 block yeah, of six, East 6th Street. Okay. And uh, Myrtle and her husband opened up the Passon. Myrtle Passon. Yes, and Fred? Fred Passon. Uh -huh. They opened a cafe over there in the 600 block. Oh, they did? On East 6th Street. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, Myrtle Passon. What was her, what did you say her husband's name was? Fred. Fred Passon and uh -huh. Myrtle Passon were sister and brothers. Oh, they and they right. opened up a cafe down there in the 600 block. That was just on the other side of Tears Funeral Home. Did, did you, have you ever heard that Fred Passon was also a tailor? Was also a tailor. Uh -huh. Did tailoring? Fred Passon. Now, let me see Fred. I, I don't know. I don't know now. He, they call him a tailor because he run a tailor shop. Right. But now he didn't make clothes. Oh, he didn't. No. See, you ordered clothes in. See, you had a, a tape and a book and thing, and you ordered clothes. Now, he would order you a suit of clothes. And uh, he could he could fit you good, you know, measure you right, you know. Uh -huh. And all, all the, make your clothes in. Now, that's what Fred Passon did. Okay. But now, he didn't sew nothing himself. He didn't make no clothes himself. Okay. And he just run a, t a tailor shop. Now, he would clean and press your clothes mm -hmm. and like that. And he would order you a suit of clothes. Where did he order it from? Different, different, you know, tailoring companies. Did he now, have tailoring? Now, Rose, Rose was a big tailoring company. In Austin uh, or, or someplace else? Hmm? Someplace else? Also, uh, Rose was the place where you could order your clothes from? Yeah, yeah there wasn't, no, wasn't, no, wasn't nobody in Austin then, Harlan, to make you a suit of clothes. See? But you, you had your clothes ordered, you know, made tailor-made. Tell me what a tailor's agent is. Hmm? What What was a tailor's agent? What was a tailor's agent? Uh -huh. Anybody that anybody that you ordered clothes from. Like Mr. Passer. See, like Mr. Passer. See, okay. the, the, the <laughs> different. Oh, I can't all call all those all those names of those places where you'd order clothes from now. 
But you could order tailor-made clothes, and they'd fit you good. It's just, it's just like a suit of clothes that you go to now. See, then too many men then, you know, want to go to a store and buy a suit of clothes. They wanted to order a suit of clothes. Now, when they ordered a suit of clothes, they know it was going to fit, you know, and be like they wanted it. But to go in the store to buy a suit of clothes, well, they might fit you and they might not. All right, so then what you're saying is that mis did, did Mr. Passon have tailors who could sew working for him? Oh, oh not as I, he, might, he must have had some help in there, okay. you know. But they didn't do no, so not if you got a hole in your pants, they darned it, or sit in your pants, pray out, they put a patch back down like that. Mm -hmm. But there, there wasn't nobody there done to make you no clothes. Uh -huh. I see, no. that's very interesting. Now, Grant? And Fuller, Aaron Fuller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they opened up a tailor shop there on Brazos Street, between 6th and 5th Street on Brazos. And that tailor shop stayed there for years, just for years. Different ones owned it, you know, after they died. Uh -huh. Well, Fuller left here and went to Chicago. Uh -huh. And Grant passed here. But Grant was down there on 6th Street when he passed. It wasn't up there on Brazos Street. And right there at 5th and Brazos, 5th and Brazos between 5th uh, and 6th, that was Brewer's Barbershop. Right. That was Brewer's Barbershop. Mm -hmm. What was it known for? Mm -hmm. You said that Bob Harrison only cut white hair, white folks' hair. What yeah, was Mr. yeah, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about a, for b cutting black people's hair now. Okay. Bro's on uh, Fifth and Brazos. Okay, I want to ask you about some more of these tailors, Mr. Jackson. Oh, there's some made, that made clothes? Yeah, have you ever heard of B.L. Joyce? Yeah, now Joyce was a tailor. Now he made clothes. Yeah, we were See, he made he made clothes. He made clothes. Oh yes, Joyce. Okay. He moved over to here later. Or I don't know. Say? I don't know. I don't know where Joyce. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm not talking about where, where did Joyce come from. Do you remember? Oh, I know. Okay. Don't remember. But now Joyce was the first real Negro tailor uh -huh. to come to Austin. He was the first the black first tailor? first tail, black tailor to come to Austin. Hmm. Well, what year was that? Do you know what, it what year? Yeah. You know about when uh, he came to Austin? Uh, sometime in the, he came to Austin sometime in the 20s. Okay. So what you're saying is that tailors in different, in different times were different, ran See, different types you, of businesses. If they just had a shop. Just to clean and press clothes. Uh -huh. They say tailor shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. But they didn't make no clothes. Right. They didn't make no clothes. They just had somebody in that was so like that. It's like I did. Now I run that shop, that fit and brasses. I got oh. that shop one time and run it. A tailor and shop? I just had, I didn't, I didn't hire nothing but a, Get on. A, a, a man was here from Waco and he could sew good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I sewed pretty good myself, mm -hmm. but now I wouldn't attempt to make nobody suit of clothes because I'd lined in his head and that stuff and that under the teacher. But uh, for for anything else, you know, I could do not like it. You, if a man had a suit of clothes that was too large, you know, would give it to you know people. See, you work for a man, he large, you know, he'd give you a suit of clothes. Mm -hmm. Now I could cut that suit of clothes down to fit you. I could take that collar out of there and cut it down, cut the sleeves down, and I could do all of that sewing. But that's not that's not being a tailor. When did you uh, when did you run run the tailor shop on Fifth and Brazos? I don't know about what year was it was when I had the tailor shop down there next to Brewer's Barber Shop. You remember about what year it was? Mm -hmm. How old were you? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I don't know. I guess I must have been sometime in the 20s. I was 20 odd years old, or maybe older. Yeah, I had to be a little older than that when I had the barber, the tailor shop down there. How old? I guess I was, I was in the late 20s, early 30s. How, well, how did you learn how to cut down suits? Oh, I don't know. I just looked sewing at home, I guess. 
on the machine. From your we mama? Had, we had a machine at home. I guess I learned to sew Your at home. Ma mama teach you? <laughs> well, sometimes they would show me something to do this or do something like that. Oh, I'd get someone else and show me what I'd do. Mr. Jackson, have you ever heard of a hairdresser named Carrie Seals? Who? Carrie Seals. A hairdresser? A lady hairdresser down on 6th Street? Carrie. Seals. S-E-A-L-S. -S. Carrie Seals. Oh, I can't. Okay, she what was, about... She was a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. What about a dentist, a, a, a lady dentist named Sarah Shelton? Oh, yes, I, I know Miss Shelton. H how do you know her? Well, I had a sister at that time, and the sister was having, you know, trouble with her teeth. Uh -huh. And my sister went to Miss Shelton. Uh -huh. She was my sister's dentist. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's, all, that's about all that I know about her. Well, she was here for a pretty good while. I know lots of people, you know, that she worked on and like that. Who else did she work on who's still alive? Hmm? I'm looking for somebody whom Sarah Shelton worked on who's still living. Do you know of oh. any of her patients? No, I do not, no. <laughs> okay. And your sister's not alive anymore? My yeah, sister, but she's in California. She's in California. And she's a convalescent just like my wife uh -huh. in California. Mm -hmm. So you think Miss Shelton was here for several years? Oh, yes, yeah, she was here for a good while. Wasn't it kind of unusual that she was a dentist since she was a woman? What did people think of that at that time? Well, they didn't. They didn't think much about it. Some of them, I don't know. Some of them may have. Some of them didn't. But she was a good dentist. Uh -huh. Miss Sheldon was a good dentist. Where, where did she get her training? In school, she went to dentistry. She taking dentistry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you knew. Okay. So it didn't. It didn't surprise anyone that here was this lady dentist. No, no, no. Good. It, good. it didn't surprise no one. Well, Gibbons was here, and Gibbons was, you know... Yeah, but he was a man. He was a man. You know, he was a man. You know, about. Was, he was born here, and Dennis was. Did you ever come across a dentist named Barlow? Named what? Barlow. Barlow. You heard that name? A dentist no. in Austin? No? No, I don't know. <coughs> okay. Have you ever heard of a man named... Pinkney A. Williams. Oh. Pinkney Williams. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you know about Mr. Williams? Uh -huh. I know. He was a he was American woodman. He was over the American woodman large here. Uh huh. At that time. What I did he do I... for the American woodman? Mm hmm. What did he do for the woodman? Mm hmm. What did he do for the woodman? What was his oh, position? Oh, everything. He collected the dues and paid off, you know, of sick claims and. Everything, you know, just like an, an insurance company. That was an insurance company that he worked for, uh -huh. American Woodman. Well, what did he do? What did Mr. Williams do? What was he, his he business? Had, he did everything was to be done for him. Had to keep all the books and all the records and everything. Okay, he, but what did he, he do? He was just like a secretary, you know. What did he do when he wasn't working for the American Woodman? That's all I ever know him to do. How long was he in Austin? Oh, oh, for years and years. Did he die here? Yes. He died here. Mm -hmm. About when? Oh. <laughs> I don't, I can't say about when he passed, but he passed here. Mm -hmm. I don't know now what year it was when he passed. Okay. Let's look through this list and see what else. Then I think we ought to ask Mr. Jackson at some point about all the different What about, what about yourself? What about telling us all the different kinds of things you did on 6th Street? Like you ran the tailor shop. When you were a little kid, you played around there and did errands. Mm -hmm. And you ran, then you, you, you did jewelry. You cleaned jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you ran the tailor shop. And what else? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what I did. I did some ever kind of, you know, work. And everything like that. I can tell you all where some rock fences is now that I built, you know, oh. when I was a young man. Now, you take a... They're on New Asa Street between uh, 23rd and 24th Street on New Asa Street. And, and the house facing west. Used to be 
some people live there named Koshel. Mm -hmm. Koshel. And I built a rock wall for them, and that rock wall is still there. The house set, you know, back up in the yard like that, and I built a wall that in some places it was about uh, 10 feet high, a little higher than I am. Mm -hmm. And it come down to 23rd Street. But it got the lower, you know, as it come down there. And uh, then I went up, come up 23rd Street, uh, made a post on the alley that you could put, you know, over the top where you could put flowers in that flower. And then up here at the gate was a post on each side of the wall. Mm -hmm. And they had a post that, and you could put flowers in there, anything you want. And then up at the corner, see? And then after that wall come back, you know, back that way. How, how now, maybe you all have heard from her. Did you all ever hear of her? Of course, I know, now this is not interesting to you, of a lady that used to teach school and was instrumental, you know, in school affairs and all like that, by the name of Jackson Pearl Jackson. She married a jeweler here by the name of, by the name of, uh, A.J. Jackson, Miss Pearl Cashel. A.J. Jackson married Miss Pearl Cashel. Mm -hmm. They white and then or I white? Yeah, they were white people well, now. They white, okay. And I built that rock wall for them, and that rock wall is still there today. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like, to get a, I'd like to get a picture of you standing in front of the wall. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how did, how, when did you build the wall? Oh, that was way back. That was that was about 19, uh, 12 or 13 when I built that. When how, I built how, that how did wall. you learn how to do rock work? Huh? Where did you learn to do to build my a wall? Father, my father. My father. learned how to lay rock and brick too. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Hello. Excuse us. Well, maybe well, we can come over and get you someday and take you over to that rock wall. All right, all right. I'll take go out there with you. I'd like to do that. Okay. What other things did you do on, on 6th Street? Besides, okay, you could lay rock, you could do jewelry, you could do tailoring. Mm -hmm. A little mm -hmm. bit of a cut, or well, not yeah, tailoring, just, but you Any kind of thing that comes to hand, oh, I would just, I'd just take and do it. You learned how to do yeah. all those things. Mm -hmm. did, did you like to learn new things? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hi, Jackson? how are you doing? Mr. Jackson, do you remember a saloon called the Lobby Saloon? The which? The Lobby <coughs> Saloon, run by William White on 6th Street at 408 6th. Or do you remember the Delaware Restaurant? Oh, yeah, I know the Delaware Restaurant. Yeah, it was close to the Avenue Hotel. Now, that, that hotel was, <coughs> was, a, was, a, was a cafe up on Congress Avenue. It was a, a, a hotel called Avenue Hotel. Uh -huh. That's one of the oldest, you know, hotels that I know of, you know, in Austin and in Driscoll. What do you remember about the Delaware? That was on the 400 block of East 6th Street. And it was Delaware uh -huh. Hotel. Uh -huh. Run by W.A. Scott. W.A. Scott. Uh-huh. Scott. No, I can't. Nope. Okay. What about Leon Vance or Vance Leon? Do you remember somebody by that name? Yes, yeah, I know Leon Vance, yeah. What do you know about him? Oh, I don't, I don't know not, not much about Leon Vance. No, I don't, I don't know much about him. Okay. What about R.T. Scott? R.T. Scott? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, I remember him. I knew him well. Uh, what did he do? Mm-hmm. What did he do? He was a gambler. Uh-huh. Scott Gamble, which I think he was a gambler. He was a gambler? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, did he also run a barber shop? Yes, he was in a barber shop at times. Uh huh. But mostly he was a gambler. Yeah. What kind of gambling? I guess playing poker, <coughs> perhaps anything, you know. Do you ever uh, remember any big wins that he no, made? No, 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 no. Pay no attention to that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You write down. Do you know what she's saying? Hmm? Do you know what she's trying to say? No. What you saying, huh? Basic, basic.
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, never mind. But you can't say it. <laughs> It'll come to you after a while. <laughs> Sometimes she can talk real good and you know, yeah. understand everything she's saying. That I'm sure she can. Uh, um, Mr. Jackson, do you remember a Mr. James Cofield? James Cofield? Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, I remember old man Cofield, but now I can't tell you nothing. About not much about him because I never was around him. I can't, I can't play so much cold field. Ran a barbershop? Huh? Barbershop? Cold field, cold field, cold field. I don't know whether cold field ever run a barbershop or not. Now, he may have. Uh-huh. Well, so many people would open up a little place here today and get them one or two chairs and say they run a barbershop and let's be two days while they go out and go on, you know, smoking. That's real good. Well, it's my impression that barbers at this time were pretty well thought of. Oh, yes, they was. If they were good barbers, some of them was. I don't guess nobody's talked about those that wasn't good barbers, you know. Because <laughs> 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 some, some of them was worth a dime and others, you know, were good. Uh-huh. Well, can you think of any other questions you want to ask me? Do you have any old pictures? No. You just don't? No. Of Sixth no. Street? No. Mm -mm. Really I've, I've had them, but all, my, all my, my sisters, yeah. all of them, you know, went to California to live. Mm -hmm. And they'd take my pictures and old records, you know, and all that kind of stuff with them. I, it's a picture that I, that I wouldn't take nothing to walk for if I had it now. I had the picture of the Elks Parade. The Elks Club, you know. Went on Sixth Street. Uh, had a had a parade, you know, here up Congress Avenue, come up to Eleventh Street, that Capitol, you know, crown, you know, town. I went back, and I had a picture of that parade. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was two of us working for the Elks at that time, Jasper Hoy and myself, mm -hmm. and they had a she cannon that would shoot. You know, you could shoot it. Mm -hmm. you know? And Jasper Hurt and I pulled that cannon, just a little bit of thing, you know, up Congress Avenue. And I had a, the whole parade. I had that picture. My sister taking that to California, and I never did see it anymore. I wouldn't take nothing for it now. I think if we find some pictures, we might get Mr. Jackson to help us identify them. Mm -hmm. You know, people. the people in them. If we, you know, we really need pictures for this exhibition. And we're going to go to the state library and look around. And if we find some pictures, would you look at them and help us identify them if oh, we take them up yes, there, yes, take I you will. up there mm -hmm. to the library? Mm -hmm. cause I'll tell you a nice picture. If it ain't, if it ain't out there, it should be. Was the first... One of the masseurs out at the University of Texas by the name of John Reed. Now, John Reed's picture should be in everything out at that university. Yeah, but we want 6th Street. You want 6th Street? <laughs> I, can't, yeah, I don't, know. I don't have Jackson, nothing for 6th Street. Do you remember any special occasions that occurred on 6th Street? Good, good, good. You were just talking about the parade, the Elks Parade. Do you remember any parades or any special celebrations that occurred? In these early years on Sixth Street, yeah, the uh, the first uh, president of I see McKinley, President McKinley, come here, and he was in leading the parade, you know, in a hat, you know, what else name, and behind him was a float. This had sides on it, you know, and all on that float, as far as it could go, it was saxo. Uh, pennies. It was pennies from that there just all the way back to the end of that float. Uh-huh. Did that... And, and he that started on six and, uh... Starters? Six and what? Uh, uh, Brazos. What's the name of the on the side of Brazos? Trinity? Major? San Jacinta? San Jacinta. San Jacinta. San Jacinta. San Jacinta. San Jacinta. Yeah, San Jacinta. Started at fifth and San Jacinta. Those men there... Started throwing them pennies on each side of that fruit. Okay. And when I got up out of 6th Street, well, then they turned and come up 6th Street to Congress Avenue. Right, where did and they... And they throw pennies away and, 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 until they got 
Come up out of the cabin and turn around to come back and come down the street, you know, on that side. They throw pennies away. Okay, did they come back down 6th Street yeah, on their way no, back? No, no, they didn't come back that way. They just went on, on, went on, went on, went on to 6th and Congress, at the 5th and Congress Avenue, you know, that's, All right, where, that's where the parade started from down right. there. Where, when did they get on the 6th Street, what hundred block? At San Jacinto or at Brazos? They turned off of San Jacinto and see just Brazos and then, and then, went then, west. And then Congress Avenue. So they were only on East 6th uh, Street blocks. for two blocks. Yeah. Okay. And this would have been in 1896? When McKinley was pr running for president in 1900, when did McKinley run for president? He was already elected president. He was president. Right, tell me what year this would have been. Oh, I don't remember what year. Okay. Well, now, you can find out in town yeah, now yeah, what year yeah, no, so McKinley can. was president. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another question I want to ask. Well, we us think about other celebrations. That was a marvelous question. Okay. Yeah. He, he doesn't matter if I interrupt you. Have any, uh, can you think of any other celebrations besides that one? No, no that's Was there any special, that. any special that's black parades or any special black celebrations on 6th Street? Oh, well, that was in the later years, you know, before that started. That was, you know, since 1920, and black oh. had, you know, and just the high school here, you know, Allison High School would have a parade, you know, down there sometime. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, After that's, the 1920s? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. But Martha was asking you about Juneteenth. Were there no <laughs> Juneteenth celebrations? Oh yeah, done yeah. down there yeah. on six. Not not down there. One nineteenth of June was uh, out here in East here. Austin. You know. Okay. What what didn't it didn't have, have nothing down in town or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But once or twice they had they had the nineteenth uh, of June out at Cedar Spring. Uh -huh. That's right off of Twenty Fourth Street. Right, I know 24th. where that is. Twenty Fourth, now Cedar Spring out there, and then yeah. they would parade out, go out Congress Avenue, and going on with Guard Loop and the you know, right. Walk out there. Okay, I've got another question for you. I want to jump back to these restaurants. Thank you, Mama what? Were there any special celebrations that people had in restaurants? Did they use these restaurants just to go out to dinner to have a good time, or did they have weddings, weddings receptions at the restaurants, or graduation parties? Do you remember anything? Do you remember any other uses of the restaurants on Sixth Street? Except just to go have a meal and have a good time? No, they didn't. Uh, they didn't have nothing in no cafe or restaurant here, you know, for after a wedding, you know, or uh -huh. nothing like that. That would have been held in the home. Yeah, that would have been held at the home. Okay, I want to ask you something else. Do you remember ever seeing any peddlers? Any what? Any peddlers? Peddlers. Uh huh. On Sixth Street. Oh, yeah, peddlers used to come through there all the time. They'd come to your home and everywhere. Peddlers would go everywhere. So. Uh -huh. do, you, do you remember any peddlers who seemed to like to go to 6th Street and stayed on a certain corner or in front of a certain business? Do you remember Do you remember seeing the same face over and over and over again? No. No? I never, I could have been, but I just didn't pay no attention to uh -huh. it. Maybe. But peddlers were common on 6th Street or common all over Austin? They're coming all over Austin. They come all over Austin. What kind of things did they peddle? Well, every kind of thing. Every, every, every kind of thing. Kitty utensils and uh -huh. so lamps and every kind of thing. They'd have every kind of thing on those wagons, those peddlers would. Yeah. Okay. You know, they used to say about uh, uh, the kings, said that Miss King was thinking about having her house move further back. said her house was 150 miles from the highway. And she's thinking about moving it further back to keep from being annoyed by annoyed by peddlers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, do you can you recommend to us any other people like you who were here in Austin who might know about Sixth Street whom we could talk to? No, I don't. I don't know any. Mr. Jackson, if we think of some more questions, can we get back in touch with you? <laughs> yes. I'm sure we'll think of some more. I'm going to go ahead and get a picture of it just today, okay. just to stay in front of the house, just in case. I got my left hand. Can we take a picture of you today? Yeah. Well, yes, you want to take my picture of it like that? Yeah. Standing in front of the house, maybe, or something. Well, all right. Outdoors, I don't need a flash. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Jackson. Mm -hmm. And thank now, you. Why, why don't we give them uh, our telephone number so if they think of something. Good idea. We're, we're going to give you her telephone number so if you think of something, just call. All right. Okay. You 
can call me any time. But you have to keep trying to call me, Mr. Jackson, because I'm hard to get in touch with. Well, maybe mm-hmm. me, because I have yeah. an issue. So call either me or call Martha. Okay? All right. I have, um, I've got one of those answering machines, you know, that t- will yeah. record a message. So you can call me. I live over in Travis Heights. Oh, you do? Lady. Oh, you did? Where did you live? Come here. I live in... I live in... What? You remember? I'm going to use it. You put these up. Keep these coming in. Here, I phone them. In case he thinks of something else. Because he's been great. We've got lots she's, of she's my bookkeeper. <laughs> if you think of something, Miss Jackson, you tell him about it, and he'll call us. Oh, okay? Right. Any of these people we've mentioned, we're oh, interested right. in all those restaurateurs and all the barbers, all the tailors, mm-hmm. all the doctors and the dentists. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What did you? What do you think are the qualities? Uh, uh, of a successful person who was working in business down there, what what kind of qualities did they have? What made them successful? That I work for? No, just of any of the black businesses. What made them successful in your mind? Black oh. patrons. Black patrons. <laughs> oh, uh, being loyal. Being loyal. Being loyal. Staying on the job and working hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who are all these clubs belong to? Clarissa. Get your out of here. Was 6th Street fun then? Was it a lot of fun? Oh, yes, it was. It was real nice, real good, real good. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jackson.